I am super excited today because I am going to be upgrading my 3 inch quadcopter. It's been flying great. Uh, when I originally built it, I built it with one of these all-in-one cameras and initially had a cloverleaf antenna on here. It worked really well. Uh, I was satisfied with it for a long time, but I'm ready for some better video. My initial goal was to upgrade just the FPV system. And because this is a all-in-one system, I'm going to have to get a camera and a VTX. And this is the Bonsai 130 frame from my RC Mart, uh, which is a great little frame, but I went ahead and used these shorter standoffs. They're 15 millimeters and slammed it. So there's not really any room for a different camera. So the camera that I really wanted to put on there was the Runcam Micro Swift. So then, of course, the problem is if the Micro Swift doesn't fit on here, what do I do? So what I ended up doing was going with, and I'm really excited to do these upgrades, this stuff right here. This should provide me with a way better FPV experience. First of all, a Runcam Micro Swift. Got it with the 2.1 millimeter lens, Eachine VTX 03. This one just seems to be the one that most people use. I've had uh, one of these before and it worked great for about six months before I crashed one too many times and they're cheap. So I just went ahead and grabbed one of those as well. And because th this new FPV system won't fit in this frame, I thought, hey, time to get a new frame. The whole three inch market has totally expanded since I first built this quadcopter. So I had a lot of options. A couple things I was looking for specifically in a frame. First of all, I wanna reuse as many components as I can. And so if I can reuse all this stuff, which works great right now. I totally want to. What I have here is RS 1306 4000 KV motors. In here I've got the Racer Star 20 amp 4 in 1 ESC, the flight controller right on top there which is from Ready to Fly Quads. It's one of the Revo Acro F4 flight controllers, which works great. And so I want to be able to use that. And it is a 30 by 30 stack. So most of the newer frames, they use the 20 by 20 stack. So I wanted to find something that could use a 30 by 30 stack, fit 1306 motors, and could accommodate for a micro swift. And of course it needed to be fairly inexpensive and lightweight. My current all up weight on this one is something like 220 something grams. So it's pretty light. I wanted to keep as light as possible. This thing is pretty slick. Most frames that I buy don't come with all this stuff. They don't have instructions. I, most of the frames I buy are, are cheap clones or whatever. This one actually came with quite a bit of cool stuff. Two battery straps, an LED tail light, which I will totally use. I don't have any LEDs on this one. It really helps when you're flying with other people. And since I got it for free, might as well. I got the purple version of this. I think this is gonna be cool. It should fit the 30 by 30 stack, as well as the Runcam Micro Swift and everything else I've got. I guess we're about to find out. There are two versions of this frame. One is a Stretch X that has two pieces that kind of fit together. This one is the True X that has one main plate. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and build up this frame, just kind of mock it up together and make sure everything fits together and I kind of understand how it all works. That way, so when I actually build it, I'll know where to put things and I'll be able to build it appropriately. So let's go ahead and get this thing open. Go ahead and use our Kershaw leak. And there's the frame. Actually feels pretty friggin' rigid for a three inch frame. This is kind of like the D-Quad Obsession, which I think is a really cool looking frame. This actually should be really durable as well. I fly my little three inch even more than my five inch because there's a lot of situations where I just don't have the space to fly my five inch and it's super easy just to get my three inch copter out and rip a few packs. People aren't as scared, it's not as loud, all that, all that good stuff. So I will go ahead and open up the rest of these packs, get it assembled really quickly and I'll be right back. Here we are, this is the frame. I went ahead and put it together really quickly. Isn't that cool? I love this purple color and I really love this design too. I think this is gonna be a really cool frame. Frame went together really easily. The only thing that was kind of weird is these are M2 by eight screws. These are M2.5 by eight. So they're like really close, almost the exact same size, but they are different size. Obviously there's lots of things about these frames and this hobby that we kind of have to figure out. Not a problem at all. While I was putting this together, I actually realized that I did not take the time to sand the carbon yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it apart and do that. My standard practice is to take the carbon, put it in some soapy water, and I wet sand the whole thing so that it smooths out all the edges. All these edges are just super smooth. I smoothed them out when I first built this thing. I've been doing this with all of my frames lately, and it really reduces when you hit stuff. The carbon doesn't delaminate as often. It also feels like just a lot better in the hand, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. And then once I'm done doing that, I'm gonna get this thing apart so that we can start mapping out where everything's gonna go. In case you're wondering what I use to sand these things normally, just use this. It's 2000 grit wet, dry sandpaper. And this was just left over from a car that I had repainted. And it works really great, you know. Again, toss this in a tub of water with a little bit of soap and just go at it with the 2000 grit sandpaper. I also use this. Man, it just does a great job of 
smoothing this out. This should be buttery smooth when I get done with the 2000 grit sandpaper. And here it is. I wish you guys could feel this. It's fantastic. Just went over all the edges and it is super smooth now. Love the way these frames feel or any carbon feels right after you give them a good wet sanding. Okay, enough of that. Now we have to disassemble this bad boy so that we can move this stuff over. I want to show you guys something cool now that the top plate is broken off here. You can see that I've hot glued the antenna to the top plate here. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. Check this out how I built it. You can see in here there's some hot glue on there because this whole UART port ripped off and so I had to solder directly. And then for the FPV all-in-one camera, I just hooked it up with a disconnect. And by the way, you can tell it's conformal coated. Oh yeah, waterproof. So I got the nuts off of the flight controller and I wanted to pause to show you something really quick. All I did to power the camera and the VTX was I soldered in a positive and negative and a connector to the flight controller where the 5 volt rail is with the ground. Super easy to do. Another cool thing that I did about this build is when I pull this off, you will see the all-in-one ESC has just this one connector so I can just pop this out and the flight controller comes off. There's the 4-in-1 ESC from Razer Star that I've been using thing again over a year it's been awesome awesome solid product that's the reason I didn't want to have to buy a 20 by 20 stack because this stuff works great flies great just want a little better FPV experience so I went ahead and undid the bolts on all the motors and the ESC should be unbolted I was actually thinking while I was uh, taking this apart I've never weighed this frame by itself I'm kind of curious to see what the weight is of this old frame compared to the new one. This frame is super dirty. A lot of crashes over the mini packs that I've flown in it. I love these 3 inch quads by the way. I crash these things so frequently. They're just so light that there's not a whole lot of momentum. Now that this is off, I should be able to take the ESC and the motors off. Set those aside. I'm going to get this totally torn down again. Then we'll get them weighed and see if this is lighter or heavier than the new frame. Now that I feel both of these frames side by side, I'm almost 100% certain that this new frame is going to be heavier. So let's find out. The Bonsai 130 is 35.53 grams and the new GEP RC Sparrow is 39.84. So it is a little bit heavier. The FPV experience having a better camera is going to far outweigh a couple extra grams in my opinion. I'd rather have a good FPV experience with a heavier quad than a crappy one with a lighter quad. I'm making that trade off consciously. It's going to be really cool to have all this protection as well because I crash a lot. I have installed the initial standoff and I'm realizing now that hopefully we don't have any clearance problems. This is a 4-in-1 ESC and I have it where the tabs are forward and back so I'm hoping that it doesn't interfere with the cage. I guess we'll find out right now. We all know part of this hobby is fixing problems as we run into them so I fully expect that some problems will happen. And another cool feature that I realized in this frame is right here there is two zip tie holes for the XT60 connector. The other thing I just need to know is will the cage fit on the frame with the ESC in place? So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the back here and I can tell you right now it's hitting the ESC tabs in the back so what I'll probably have to end up doing is I'll get my Dremel out and I will cut some of the material off the inside of here. I think that's going to be my best bet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll see what happens. I had a duh moment. Why don't I just flip the ESC to the side so the tabs are now on the sides. Why not, right? And then I can just remap the motors. Because now it fits. No problem at all. I am going to desolder this and I'm going to run it back this way down the ESC so that I can still use these zip tie holes. I like running my battery off the back. It's a super easy fix to make, so I'm going to do that really quick. All right, that's done. What I did was desoldered them, flipped them around, ended up having to extend the wires out a little bit, which is really not a problem. When you're as cheap as me, you end up extending a lot of wires. Nice shiny solder joints. Oh yeah. All I'm going to have to do is remap the motors, which is no big deal at all. I'm not going to have to trim anything, which is super awesome. Anytime I have to cut away at a frame, it doesn't make me happy. And I've, I've done it a lot of times before. In fact, on this frame here, I had to notch out the frame here a bunch. I had to cut new holes for the camera. I drilled some janky holes in the back for zip ties. So, I've done it before. Just don't really like doing it if I don't have to. So, I'm glad I don't have to go hacking at this thing now. Now the ESC is in place. Sweet. All I have to do is get the flight controller mounted. And then, I think what I'm going to do is the VTX-03 has an input for a 1S battery voltage. And guess what? It happens to be the same connector that I used on the flight controller. So I should be able to connect that 
bingo, connects, and that'll get 5 volt through the flight controller, of course, that's coming from the 4 in 1 ESC. And then the output here on the VTX03 actually is video, and then it has a 5 volt output with the ground. So all I have to do is chop these things off, splice in the other connector, and I should be able to just drop that in and not have to do any more soldering in terms of getting power to the VTX or the camera. Whether or not this is going to supply enough current to do 200 milliwatts on this and supply the camera with enough current. And I'm going to go ahead and put the flight controller on here. I'll get the rest of the motors bolted up and then we'll go from there. So all done with that. So what I did was I put all the motor screws in. I used four in each motor. By the way, I don't lock tight. Never had a motor screw come out. I'm not going to worry about it. I went ahead and put some electrical tape around the arm. By the way, when I put the motor or when I put the electrical tape on the motor wires, I put this cage on first because I wanted to make sure that the motor wires had a clean run and then they weren't going to get pinched by this. So installed that real quick, ran the motor wires, did the electrical tape. So what I'm going to do next is take the cage off, install the micro swift in the cage, and then put the cage all back together. I'm going to have to figure out how to run the antenna. And what I think I'm going to do is actually just coil this up and run this through this hole here. And I'm going to put the antenna, the shorter antenna tube. So I'm going to pull this through just like that. I will stick the cap on because why not? And just tape the XM receiver down to the flight controller. No big deal. I'll be running with the one antenna sticking out the back there, which is pretty cool. And then I am going to run the antenna. I'm going to keep this whip antenna. I'm going to use that for a while. And I'm going to run that out this back hole here like that. I was thinking about just popping it right on top of the re XM receiver there. That would be a good place to put it. Either way, I've got to figure out a way to get this antenna to stick up rather than back right into my props. Probably just run a tip tie right here that way. This should be super easy. So what I'm going to do again is take this cage off and install the micro swift. Just going to have to put some screws in the sides of the camera there. Once that's in there, it should be a matter of some tape and plugging in one connector and soldering a couple joints. Cross my fingers. I hope that's all. As you guys know, if you're in this hobby, it's never that easy. I am going to have to remap these motors, so I might have to do some stuff in BL Heli. Shouldn't be a problem. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and get this off and we'll get the swift mounted back again it's actually the next day and she's pretty much buttoned up so what have i done since last time first of all i haven't shown this yet but this is a really cool battery pad underneath here that you can see this seems like it'll work really well okay so what did i have to do i went ahead and installed the micro swift i installed the free sky xm receiver right in there and then i ran the antenna around and then up through this antenna tube actually and what i did was underneath this antenna tube i hot glued it to this carbon piece. I'm like almost 100% certain that that's gonna break off at some point. I don't know, we'll see. What I did with the VTX-03 was I just used double-sided tape right on top of the stack. Before I put the VTX-03 in here, I put hot glue on all the connections and then I wrapped it in some heat shrink and then again, I just taped it right on top there. So when I plug it in, you'll be able to see the channel and that little readout. And then I also left the button accessible so I can still hit the button to change the channel and the power output and all that good stuff. So for now, she's pretty much done. It went together really easily. It was super cool. You know, remember I flipped the ESC 90 degrees? Well, I went into beta flight into the command line and I remapped the motors. What I did was I remapped them to the right place and then I had to go into BL Heli and I had to reverse them all because I have these spinning props out. So it's running reverse direction. All the motors are swapped around and they've all been remapped to different locations. So when I fire this thing up, it might be somewhat of a crapshoot. I think it'll work, but you never know. What I'm going to do now, I already checked the continuity to make sure nothing was going to smoke on me. I don't use a smoke stopper, but I'll go ahead and plug this thing in. We'll see if we get any smoke now. looks good so you can see in there I'm on f4 25 milliwatts and I did check in my goggles the video is perfect I'm super happy I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some props on here and see if I can just test hover it in my garage right now I'm using these DYS 3045s very similar to the Rotor X 3040s these are way cheaper which is why I use them these work pretty well with these motors I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing a test hover and we'll see if it flips out or if it flies here it is time for the maiden horizon mode don't hate on the horizon mode we're in the garage and everything worked great. So I, I plugged it in, used one of these Tattoo 850 4S. I just wanted to see if it would hover. It popped up, it hovered perfectly. I kind of zipped it around a little bit. Also checked the video, which looks great, way better than the other camera. And then I also took some DVR on my Fat Shark goggles.
I'd say it's a success. I think it looks great. I'm really happy that I'll have this new FPV camera. I think I'm really going to like this new copter. The only thing I don't like is this antenna tube, so I will probably change that out just because it's annoying to me, but otherwise it works perfect, so I'm super stoked with the upgrade. Of course, it has to be pouring down rain outside, so I can't go out and fly it, but as soon as we have a nice day here, I will take it out and rip some packs and have some fun. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully this was helpful. I'm going to have a good time flying this thing. See you around.